So here I have data in my TrueNAS scale installation, and I would like to back some of it up to Linode. So I'm not affiliated with Linode at all, it's just the service that I use for data storage in the cloud. So here is the process for setting up a backup of a data set from TrueNAS scale to Linode object storage. So here in Linode, we need to create a bucket and a user so that we can back up our TrueNAS system. So you go into object storage, and you can see I already have a bucket here, that's my website. So let's create a bucket. So we're going to call this bucket um, Applard test, and you can pick different regions. And so Atlanta and Newark are the two in the US. I'm going to pick Newark, create a bucket. Uh, so now an important thing here, if you look at this carefully, so my the URL of my bucket is applardtest.useast1.linodeobjects.com. So this US East 1 is for the Newark data center, and if you're in the Atlanta data center, it's US Southeast 1.linodeobjects.com. And we're going to need to remember that later. Uh, so now we need to create an access key in Linode so that we can have access from our TrueNAS system. So we're going to create the key, and we're going to call it TrueNAS give it limited access, and the only one we're going to give it access to is read-write access to our Applard test bucket, and not to my website. So now we create key, and now it's going to give us the key, an access key and a secret key, and we need to copy these directly into TrueNAS now, because these keys will disappear as soon as we close this window, and Linode won't save them. So over in TrueNAS, we go down to Credentials, Backup Credentials, and that takes us here, and we can add a new one, and this will be our Linode instance. So we're going to name this Linode, and for provider we're going to choose Amazon S3, because Linode supports the S3 API. So now we have access key and secret access key, so we go back over to Linode and we copy those one at a time. There, they're copied. And now under advanced settings, this is very important. So by default, TrueNAS is going to go to Amazon Web Services if you choose Amazon S3 as your provider, but we can force it to go to Linode instead. So if we go back over here, we can close the access keys window because we've saved them now in TrueNAS. We go to buckets. Because I picked Newark, New Jersey, my data center is useeast1.linodeobjects.com. And so for Linode, we need to copy that entire thing as the endpoint URL. Um, and then for region, we need to type US in caps. So Linode doesn't use the region field of S3. Instead, they change the endpoint URL for each data center. So if you're in Atlanta, you would do US Southeast 1. And if you're in Newark, you would do US East 1. And if you're anywhere else in the world, you'd use the correct data center. Um, so now we can hit verify credential. It's going to check and make sure it's valid. In this case, it says the credential is valid. So we can say OK. And we hit Save. Now we have a new credential called Linode that lets us access our object storage in Linode, but we haven't created any rules yet to put anything there. So now to create a backup, we go to data protection, and here's all the data protection I'm already doing. I'm doing strubs and, and snapshots. So we're going to go down to cloud sync tasks and add a new one of those. So in this case, we're going to back up test data set to Linode. And we choose our credential set, which in this case is Linode, which it tells us is an S3 data set. Uh, in this case, because we're pushing data from our local TrueNAS system to the cloud provider, we're going to use push. And now we pick a bucket, and the only one we have access to with these credentials is Applard test. So we pick that bucket, and now we have to choose our transfer method, in which we have three. So one of them is sync, move, and copy. So each of them have different use cases. And depending on how you're backing up your data, you may want to choose one or the other. So the default is copy, which says the files from the source are copied to the destination. If files with the same name are present on the destination, they're overwritten. Now what this doesn't do is it doesn't delete files on the destination. So if you have a folder of files and you delete something, um, it won't delete it in the cloud storage. You have to go into the cloud storage and delete it manually. And this might be very useful if you want your data to continually accumulate. If you edit a file, the edits will get pushed and they'll overwrite the older version of the file, so it won't store the history unless you configure that separately in Linode. So that's a decent option. Another decent option is sync, 
And what sync will do is it will completely match the destination to the source. So all of the changes on the source will get pushed to the destination, including deletions. So if you delete a file locally, that deletion will get pushed up to the cloud and the file will get deleted on the cloud as well. And the most destructive is move. So with move selected, it will delete the files at the source after it's done copying them. So this would be nice if you want to transfer your data between systems, but not for a backup. So in my case, I'm going to use sync. Uh, but sync and copy are both very good options for backups, depending on your backup strategy. So now we need to choose where we're going in the bucket, which in this case I have a whole bucket just for this, so I'm just going to drop it in the root of the bucket. And then here we need to choose which data set on our TrueNAS system we're going to back up. And we can go all the way down to the file level. So projects has a data set, but if I go in there, there's folders in here, and I can choose an individual folder. So I'm going to choose this folder here called Test. And this has some files that I can show you guys. And then for schedule, I'm going to say every night at midnight. We could, of course, do a custom schedule, or we could do hourly, daily, weekly, monthly defaults. Um, none of the other options are particularly important to us. We'll come back and talk about encryption in a bit. Um, the last one I'm going to mention here is bandwidth limit. So with bandwidth limit, you can tell it to limit how much data it sends over the network while doing the bandwidth. And the units are in mibibytes or gigabytes, um, which are a little bit different than megabytes and gigabytes, but they're pretty similar. So in this case, I'm going to set the limit to 1M, which means 1 mibibyte per second, because that's about a third of my internet bandwidth, my internet upload bandwidth. So I don't want to completely saturate my internet upload. If you'd like, you can hit dry run. And what dry run will do is it'll connect to the cloud service, but it won't transfer any data. And so if I hit that, it says notice hello world.txt skipped folder slash thumbnail skipped. So I have two files. One of them is in a folder and it skipped both of them because dry run was set. So now we're going to save that and we're going to run it and we'll see what actually happens in Linode. So I'm going to run it right now. It started, it finished. So now if we go back to Linode, let's see what we got. So I got a text file, I got a folder, and in that folder I have a thumbnail. And that's exactly what was in my test data set. If we flip over here, you can see on the test data set I have a text file, I have a folder with a thumbnail. So that exactly got copied up to Linode. What if we accidentally delete our folders? What if I accidentally delete this file here? What if I want to do a restore? What if I lose the entire data set? So come back over here, and if we hit play, that'll run the sync, which will delete everything on the other side because it's in sync mode. But if we click this one, it'll let us do a restore. And this basically creates a one-time job with the same settings as the original job to help us restore. And we can even restore it to a different place. So if we accidentally deleted some files, it'd be quite a lot of files. If we deleted one or two files, we just go to Linode's web UI and download the file from there. But if we lost a lot of data, we could come back here and create a new data set and say that's where we want to restore it and click restore. And now it creates a new cloud sync task that's not enabled. And when we run that, it'll do a restore and finished. So we come back over here and we got our files. That file's there, and the thumbnail's there. So what if we want to encrypt our data? So the options we have here, if we scroll down, this is my directory again. So the option we have is to use encryption in TrueNAS. Um, and basically what this does is this encrypts the files on TrueNAS before they're sent to Linode. And you have the option to encrypt just the contents or to encrypt the contents and the file names. So in this case, I'm going to encrypt the contents and the file names. And so now we need to give it a password and a salt. And this is something that you should store safely so you can restore your data later. Um, I'm just going to use the word test now because this is not my real backup. But So you, you type the password, you type the salt, and we have the same options as before. Now we save it. And so if we run this, I got a success. Let's see what we get in Linode. So over here we had an empty bucket. So if I refresh, I should see the encrypted files. So I have a file that's encrypted. If I click the download button, I get this encrypted file. And 
Windows has no idea what to do with it. And the same with the folders. The folder name has been encrypted, and there's a file in it, and we can tell how big the file is, but we can't tell its extension or anything else about it, and Linode has no idea what to do with it. So to restore an encrypted data set, we have a similar process. Let's say we come back over here and we accidentally deleted all of our encrypted files. So now our data set on Linode is encrypted, but it's there. We want to restore it. So we're going to again click on the Restore button. We're going to call it Restore. And we're going to tell it where we want to put the Restore, which is in our test folder. Restore. So if we click the Restore button, It remembered our password because it was in the initial job. Come back here, and our files are restored. But what if we don't remember the password? What if we're trying to set up a new TrueNAS system because our whole TrueNAS system failed? We want to, we want to restore everything. So let's delete the files again. And we'll delete our restore job we created with the restore wizard. And we're going to create a new job just so that we can restore. We're going to use the same credentials. This time we're going to say pull because we're doing a restore. We're going to pull from the test bucket. We're going to use a transfer copy method and we're going to pick a destination. So now we need to tell it that what our password was. So this is where keeping your password safe and secure is very important. My test password and my test salt aren't very safe. But if you were to lose either of these things, you would not be able to restore your data at all. So I'm going to save that, and I'm going to run it. And sure enough, our data is back. So it's possible to recover from a complete system failure. Your house burns down, everything burns down. But you've got to keep that backup password safe if you're going to use encryption. If you're not going to use encryption, you can go right into the web UI in Linode and download the individual files from there. So hopefully this helps you keep your data safe with TrueNAS Scale. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, please consider liking and subscribing so YouTube can recommend more from me in the future.